Greetings viewers, Nida here, bringing you another review. So, if you follow me on social media, you'll have noticed I've been doing a lot of Pokemon stuff. I became a fan of the Pokemon franchise way back when I was just a wee little lad. I played the games and got invested in the anime when it was Ash, Misty, and Brock, and continued to watch all the way through the Jojo Saga to the earlier episodes of X and Y. Today's video is going to be on the latest season, Pokemon Journeys the Series. In this series, Ash has returned to Ganto, and stays at the Cerise Laboratory in Vermilion City, run by Professor Cerise, whose goal it is to study every Pokemon in the world. And as such, Ash travels all over the world, revisiting previous regions. But it isn't just Ash. This time he's accompanied by a boy named Go, whose goal it is to one day capture Mew. <laughs> Yeah, good luck. But we'll work his way towards that goal by catching as many Pokemon as possible. Like always, that his partner is Pikachu, and Go's partner is Scorbunny. And as always, the Team Rocket trio of Jesse, James, and Meowth often appear, usually with the goal of either capturing Pikachu or any other Pokemon of the day. So, which episode am I reviewing from this latest season? Episode 26, titled Flop. Koi King, put it on Yacht King. One note before we start, however. I'm not sure how well this video will do, or if anyone will even be able to watch it, since ShowPro is notorious for copyright claiming any video that shows any clips or audio from the anime, and blocking them worldwide. They've done this to numerous creators like Swade, who now makes frequent reviews of the Pokemon anime, and the only way you can see a riff on a Gen 1 episode me and my friend Nantar did, is on my rare used Vidly account. I'll be posting this review there too, but I'll also be trying to make this video as transformative as possible. I don't make any money off my videos, but it still sucks about all this effort into something only to have it all rendered being this by a company that doesn't understand or just flat out dismisses fair use. Not that I'm still bitter! <laughs> The episode opens up with Team Rocket in their new base, feeling the frustrations of quarantine. No. What's really going on is they're bored silly, since Giovanni hasn't given them any orders lately. So James decides that they should start training. Sort of a nitpick I have this season. Team Rocket don't really use the Pokemon they had from Hoenn to Sinnoh, or even the Pokemon they caught in Kalos. Jesse's Wobbuffet is really the only Pokemon from the original series that's still part of the team. Instead, in this season, the trio, or rather the quartet, is part of a new project Giovanni came up with called the Rocket Gacha Machine, which is basically what it sounds like. A gacha machine that contains Pokeballs of all the Pokemon the Team Rocket organization has managed to capture. In order for it to work though, Jesse and James use the charm on the outside as a makeshift coin. If I were to reach, I'd say this is a nod to the Adventures manga, where Team Rocket runs which frequently use Pokemon they don't have in the games. Since the Pokemon that come out of the Pokeballs in this machine are always random, this also sort of implies that the organization successfully set up branches in Hoenn, Sinnoh, and Unova. While I admit it's fun to see whenever the machine shows up, because you never know what will come out, unless you go to Bulbapedia, I can't be the only one who wishes Jesse and James will ask for their Pokemon to be sent to their new base. Another issue I have is that the machine is always delivered by a Pelipper. Why? Team Rocket already has a flying type Pokemon whose whole gimmick is making deliveries. One episode of the Season 3 anime even has Delibur delivering two Pokemon to Jesse and James that were meant for Cassidy and Butch. <sighs> anyway, Pelipper manages to show up at their hideout. Somehow, the only way to access their base is through a fake telephone booth. And the Pokemon that come out are a Slowking and a Magikarp. And then James breaks the fourth wall. <laughs> Remember that old game from Pokemon Stadium where you tried to see which Magikarp could jump the highest? That's the focus of the first half of this episode. And the reigning champ is a guy named Kazuking, who I can only presume will be named something less Japanese in the dub. And kind of reminds me of Sergeant Brody from Yokai Watch. Right down to having his own workout show with his Magikarp Ken King as co host. I never knew fish could have abs. Go play in Santa's contest with the giant magic arc. He got in sin. Oh my god! Apparently fish Pokemon don't die when you overfeed them. They just get disgustingly fat. Uh, <clears throat> 
As a go, however, decide that all that magic art needs is a little exercise. So While watching this, I assume that the boulder that shows up to help Magikarp train belongs to Ash, but no. Bobo Pedia says it's just a random boulder. As dissatisfied as I may have become with the black and white anime, there were things in it I liked. The team of Pokemon Ash made for himself in Unova being one of them, for the most part. Originally, I thought Ash had asked Professor Oak off screen to transfer Boldor, but then while scripting this, I remembered that Boldor are amongst Pokemon that evolved when traded, so it probably would have become a Gigalith. So the big day of the contest comes. And goes first opponent is. Nushi from Inuyasha? We also see that Kazuking has arrived, and soon enough, he and Go are going against each other. However, Go has a secret. <laughs> あいてにとって不足なし。今こそお前は翼を手に入れる時だ。わっと。高選手の恋キングの背びれが。うん。これは。俺の恋キングはずっと重りをつけて跳ねていたんだ。衝撃の告白です。いつの間にあんなものを。I feel like I'm watching an episode from the latter half of Dragon Ball. Not an episode of Pokemon. While both magic arguments jump pretty high, Goes jumps the highest. In fact, it jumps so high, it breaks the stratosphere. And because Ken King was the only one to come back down, Hazuki wins by default. Well, that's all kinds of unfortunate. The world in which I went so happy rainbow colors has suddenly been tinged with gray. The second half of the episode opens with Ash and Go on Slowpoke Island, which, as the name implies, has tons of Slowpoke living there. Hey, I know that song. Neat. There's a bit of a joke here about how udon noodles and the Slowpoke Japanese name Yala sound similar. Not sure how this joke is gonna go when the episode gets done, but it's worth considering this. What's wrong now? I think I see another bug. Gross. Maybe it's a <sighs> counterpee. <laughs> I feel anyone actually bothers learning Japanese will cringe. I know I do looking back on it. It appears that Ash isn't the only one who likes to eat on noodles, however. Since we mean a slow king that is eating its own cup of noodles. Okay, I get why Ash has noodles. He probably had them in his backpack. But this is a remote island with no connection to the outside world. How did slow king get any? After hearing from his Pokedex about how slow king are genius Pokemon, Go tries to catch it. And the Slow King just stops the Pokeball thrown at him with its psychic abilities. Gee, wouldn't that just say a Pokemon like this were real? Of course, it could also be that since Go follows the Pokemon Go style of capture, where he just chucks the Pokeball at what he wants to catch, I guess it really shouldn't be that much of a shock. I mean, he actually had to try when he caught his Scyther. After Ash shares some of his news with the Slow King, he likes them so much that the Slow King takes its crown off, puts it on Ash, and then this happens. I'm excellent! Huh? Understand? I'm not a JoJo fan, but that felt like a reference. Ash declares that he is Sato King. Again, not how shows will go in the dub. And will improve the lives of all Slowpoke. Go dies with a crown, but Ash is suddenly too fast for him. And not even Pikachu and Rabbit can get the crown off the suddenly nimble catch him. Ash then tells Go he considers him part of his family. And tells the Slowpoke to attach a shoulder to Go so he'll become a slow bro. 
What? Is this something that goes on in every Silk King's head? Or is it just Dash now that he's become one with the crown? Is some kind of Ice King thing going on here? Rabu manages to kick out the crown, only for it to land on Go, who then declares himself to be Go King, and that he intends to capture every single Slowpoke. What well, follows is a game of Hot Potato with the crown. That comes to a sudden end when Go's magic card returns to Earth, conveniently crash landing on Slowpoke Island. Which causes such a tremor that the crown flies off of whoever's wearing it now and back onto Sloking, and everything goes back to normal. We hope you've enjoyed No Moral Theater. Nothing describes this episode like stupid fun. It's all nonsensical, but that's entirely the point. I honestly laughed a few times while watching this, and considering the state of the world right now, I think we could use all the laughs we can get. While I can't say I really care for the first half of the episode, it's a essential for the resolution of the second half. The only real nitpick I have is that the Pokedex says that if Slowking's crown is removed, it'll revert into a Slowpoke. But we can clearly see that it's still wearing its rough. So what happened here? Is it still a Slowking even without its crown? Or is it just a Slowpoke wearing a Slowking's rough? Eh, probably doesn't matter. This is Night Eye saying thanks for letting me share my thoughts. Please share yours with me.